Life's centrifuge. Prior to beginning Dharma practice are the so-called common preliminaries. And they struck me to the core when I first contacted them. I found that these four thoughts were pretty much what I had been thinking to myself all along about life. Now their official title is The Four Thoughts That Turn the Mind Toward the Dharma. And the first three thoughts rang like a bell when I first heard them, and, and they are, number one, this human life that we have is precious and it should not be wasted. And I always want it to be used up for some good reason, so that struck, that struck me. The second thought is life, this life we have is fragile and impermanent, like a soap bubble or a water bubble. And the third thought is about karma. Our every action brings an equal reaction that defines us and it's rec recorded. So that's three of the four thoughts. However, it was that fourth thought that I've had to wrestle with a bit. And it, it has many translations such as the shortcomings of samsara or the meaninglessness of samsara and sometimes translated as the defects of samsara. And samsara is this cyclic world of day-to-day -day existence that we all now live in, you know, with its ups and its downs and its endless go cycles going on and on and around forever. And in talking with myself, my take on the fourth thought was that it's like a casino. We will never game the system and we will never quite get all of our ducks in a row. Um, it's rigged. And to top it off, the, that fourth thought that turns the mind is perhaps most often translated, and this was a hard for me to understand, simply as revulsion of samsara, meaning revulsion of this world that we live in. And apparently the devout Dharma practitioner at some point becomes fed up and revolted by this samsaric world that, that I'm talking about. So with that in mind, I find that it's important to note that Buddhist texts point out that samsara, this world, cyclic world, and nirvana, you know, enlightenment, are conate. This means a lot. Conate means that they, samsara and nirvana are two sides of an identical of the same coin. They're reciprocals of one another and inseparable. So in other words, the closer we get to reaching nirvana, the more we find ourselves realizing samsara. That's what conate means. So re revulsion of samsara is only as useful as it might lead to the transformation of samsara for us, samsara, samsara, that's what I used to call it to myself, into nirvana. And being revolted or, or thinking that with nirvana, you know, we will somehow make an exodus from samsara to some, you know, quote, heavenly place as an alternative, it's not an alternative. That's just a simple mistake, mistake. In other words, there is no alternative to samsara other than making a silk purse out of a sow's ear, as the old saying goes the sow's ear being samsara itself. There is nothing whatsoever beyond what now is other than what isn't. And, and by definition that couldn't be much. So here we are for better or, or for worse in the middle of samsara, our life, with no, no way out other than realization. And until realization happens for us, we're going to remain in samsara. Now perhaps the translation quote revulsion of samsara end quote 
meant to say or means to say that we stop fixating on this world of attachments that we live in. Somehow it no longer captivates us. That's a kind of liberation. Yet revulsion basically means, you know, we're repulsed, repulsion, which would be just another form of attachment to me. And I believe, you know, I believe that the Dharma is better than that. So I'd, I've had trouble understanding that translation. So what the word revulsion may mean is uh, a loss of fixation, a loss of attachment on our part to this world. That would make more sense to me, but revulsion seems to me like just the opposite of positive attachment. You know, attachment in reverse, but still just another form of attachment. Samsara, samsara is often defined as the endless cycles of experience that we are in, going up and you know, going down and on around. And for sure, we all sometimes reach the point where we feel like saying, you know, stop the merry-go-round, uh, you know, I want to get off. And that happens uh, to me every time I get stuck in the trough of the low end of a cycle, you know, where I am more down than I'm up and I tend to cry out. Yet I notice that I don't cry out when I'm at the tip of the top of a cycle, you know, and flying high when I feel great. Then it's more like I, I cry out for more of it, you know, give me more of it. I could, you know, I could do this forever and I feel good. Obviously, that's when we are at the top of the cycle. It's when we're there that we desire more lives, more births, more living. So, samsara is recursive, self-sustaining. It lit literally desires to go on forever. Anyway, that's where we're at. That's the kind of sickly behavior that we exist through, at least uh, where I, as I see it. With me, stop the train, I want to get off, doesn't, doesn't happen very often, but it, it happens. Yet here we are talking about uh, revulsion, you know, being revolted, revolted by it all. And I, I don't like that concept. I much prefer not reacting, learning to not react to whatever is revolting, and instead learning to respond appropriately, you know, to roll with it. For, for example, I have been revolted. I have felt repulsion, but I'm still not enlightened. So uh, that's for me laughing out loud. Although I can't quite manage it, the, the pith Buddhist texts say that the re realization of samsara, when we realize it, is nirvana. Now that's saying a lot, and it's exactly what my first Dharma teacher in the late 1960s taught me when he would say to me, Michael, this is hell, and we have to make our own little heaven in a corner of it. And that reminds me of when a high Rinpoche was asked whether a bodhisattva could be born outside of Buddhism, you know, like in another, other religions or wherever. And he responded, of course they could. Buddhism is not a religion, but it's a path to realization and to enlightenment, wherever you find yourself in this world. Mm -hmm.